Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about my YouTube monthly earnings, how much I make from YouTube, how much taxes are, how do I manage all this, and just how to make money on social media. You guys asked me questions from Instagram and I'm just gonna answer them. So the first question is, how much money do you make from AdSense? I actually have a paper that Google literally sends you. If you guys don't know, at the end of every calendar year, the brand, or in this case, Google or YouTube, will send you basically something called a 1099, which is kind of like a receipt of how much money you made from that year, so you can report it to taxes. So I can't really show all the information on this paper. Um, <laughs> so just imagine a piece of paper. But uh, in 2021, I reported $7,000 from YouTube AdSense, exactly 7,091.69. So if you divide that over like 12 months, I'm pretty sure that's like right around, uh, guys, don't make me do math. Uh, that's right around $583 a month. That is not the most amount of money my channel has made. Um, for, do for those who don't know, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. Out of the 10 years, I think three of the most recent years were the ones where I was actually making full-time income. My first year of making money on YouTube, I made around $40,000 just from AdSense and little to none from brand deals. The second year, which is two years ago, I think I made around 25 with not a lot of brand deals, but this year I made $7,000 for AdSense. So you can see a, a continual decrease, but I was able to make the most amount of money from brand deals. I think it was around 80,000 like for the total year of last year. So it just shows you that as a YouTuber, you don't necessarily have to make money the same way as someone else does. You might be someone making no money on AdSense, but 100% on brand deals, or you might be making money on none of that, but just merch. You might just be making products. You might do coaching. So as a YouTuber and creator, the way your business model looks will be different. And it might not even be dependent on you. It might be dependent on like the industry. Like for me, my views decreased just because I wasn't making the same amount of videos. Like for example, I don't make the viral Instagram growth hacks anymore. This is just not me. My views decrease, but I still get brand partnerships because I am a unique position. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm young, and I talk about creator economy. So I work with a lot of tech brands. I work with Shopify platforms come to me to run their marketing. I have an agency as well called X8 Media. So like my revenue stream will be different. and. That might be the case for you as well. How much do you pay yourself versus your team? This is a really good question. I'm gonna actually make a whole video about how to build a team, which you guys can check out somewhere here, um, and I'll, or I'll link it below in the description. But basically, the way I look about it is, if I get, let's just say, 10 bucks, the way I break it down, I divide it in half. For example, say you get $10 dollars, hypothetically speaking. Five dollars goes to my life, and five dollars goes to the world. With the five dollars that goes to the world, I usually break it between 20 to 30 percent for editors, managers, etc., and then 20 to 30 percent again for taxes. I am very strict with that. I did not used to do that. I used to spend every single dollar I make. And in terms of how much I save versus invest, I'll make a whole video on that. If you guys want that, I'll link it below. But just for you guys who are curious, you know, I might take home close to a hundred thousand dollars just in my YouTube channel but 50% of it goes to exterior places and half of it stays with me. And that's just that. That's how I work. And I works really effectively because I'm able to save for the future. I'm able to put money into my team, but also pay taxes, which everyone has to do. How much do you spoil yourself and save? Good question. So I don't really spoil myself, but that's just because I'm the most comfortable with saving money for experiences instead of buying things. So I will save up for a trip. I'll save up for like a cool concert, but I really won't buy things. The most amount of money I really spend on a monthly basis is food. <laughs> My food budget is one to two K a month. If you're wondering why it's because I take creators out to dinner and that's an, a business expense. Okay. So there's another angle to that but uh food is one of my biggest expenses but it's also one of my most personal indulgences and i also live in california so food is expensive <laughs> how do you save money for big expenses slash trips slash equipment when i first bought my computer microphone everything i didn't have money like i we used to i use the shittiest shit now that i have money i bought this macbook with the apple card i have the brand new m1 pro max i think i bought this with the apple card which basically enables me to pay monthly for it and the reason why i do that is because it helps my credit score it's simple i set it up it's great if you're trying to buy big things especially equipment try to utilize your credit you know you don't want to do this for everything but mostly for apple products you can use the apple card and pay it monthly and and I find it works really great, especially if you're really responsible with money. 
and you can pay your bills on time. With that being said, I think for little things like cameras and microphones, you know, I, again, like to aggressively save. So whenever I get a paycheck, I put a percentage into a safe or like a crypto fund where I can invest. And then later on, if I need something, then I'll take it out. That's how I personally save money for big expenses. If you guys are wondering, I want to talk about one of my favorite tools for building a YouTube channel and growing it so you guys can make more money. It's called vidIQ. And it's actually the sponsor of today's video. But before you click away, I actually used to use vidIQ for like literally since I was starting my YouTube channel, like seriously, when I was actually making money like three and a half years ago. So back in 27, 2018, I learned about vidIQ which is a tool for YouTubers to get more views by recommending titles, improving your thumbnails, and helps you get better SEO, which stands for search engine optimization, which basically gets you more clicks so people watch your content. But I've been personally using their daily ideas tool, which I've talked about before, which helps you generate ideas. And VidIQ is absolutely free to sign up. You know, if you guys are curious, like I've been uploading a lot of videos lately and it's because I want to practice uploading a lot so I can build my confidence because for those who don't know, I actually have dealt with a lot of insecurities on my YouTube channel. And sometimes when you're building a business and just starting, you need lots of ideas. And VidIQ Daily Ideas just does that. You guys should check it out using my link. It's an affiliate link. So if you care to support me, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna treat your channel like a business, whether to get more views, to make more money, or just to get more ideas, which is why I use it, check out VidIQ today. All right, someone asked me how many Bitcoins I have. I am not gonna answer. I don't, okay, personally for me, I think it's really cringe when people talk about how much money they have in their investment accounts. Like, first of all, I don't want to get fucking like kidnapped Two, I don't want to be a moving target. And three, I mean, I guess if someone wants to know, but I feel like it's super dangerous, especially with like hackers. So I'm not going to answer that question, but I'll just say I don't actually have a lot of money in Bitcoin. Most of my money is in Ethereum and Polygon. How much do you spend in a day? This is a really, again, important question. I think if you're a creator, you should know how much your expenses are because if you are trying to save up for certain things and you don't know how much you spend, you're not going to know when you're able to get that item. So personally for me, I would probably spend 40 bucks a day on food and gas and like parking just because I go to surf and it costs money to park here in LA. My rent is around 1200 a month. So we can factor that in. But for the most part, I don't buy big purchases. I just buy a lot of small things like my, my food, I have a food delivery company, um, Wi-Fi, utilities, all that fun stuff. How are the taxes in California? So the taxes in California, honestly, I haven't experienced yet. I'm actually gonna pay Californian taxes this year because I officially signed a lease. If you guys don't know, I've been traveling back and forth from LA to Portland uh, to the, around the world for a while. Like I've just basically been a nomad, so I haven't had a place here. I'm originally from Washington, so like I've just been back and forth. This is the first year where I have my own place. I'm gonna pay taxes and I'll let you guys know. I already got my quote for this year for taxes and it's it's gonna it's gonna sting. It's in the upper five figure range, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna puke. What is your net worth? <laughs> um again, I just I don't think it's a bad thing to make a video on how much money you make. Net worth I feel like can be kind of dangerous just because especially in the crypto space, like you don't wanna publicitize how much money you have. Like again, I'm not gonna answer that question, but for those who are curious, I do have a couple of things that I'm like still paying off. Like I'm still paying off my laptop, I'm still paying off my car, which I have a drive a Kia Soul. I have quite a bit of investments, but I also have quite a bit of things I need to pay off still. Is it bad to have a balance of things I still pay up, need to pay off, I guess? I don't know, personally for me, it's just I want to have more cash on hand than spending it so I can invest more or I can spend it on travel and stuff. So that's what works for me. The last question we have is, what is your credit card lineup? This is such a good question. Again, you guys are so smart with this. Credit cards are important as a creator because again, sometimes you might need something, but you don't have the money for it. So credit cards are a great way to spend it. Of course, be responsible. You want to spend money you, you have. So, you know, typically I use a credit card only if I maybe have a brand deal check, but it doesn't come in till like two weeks later and I need to buy something, like I will use a credit card for that. But credit cards aren't bad. A lot of people think credit cards are like something to look down upon. If you have a balance, you're a bad person. Like that is not true. Like, I don't know where we got that. Like as a business owner or YouTuber, you need to cash flow, manage your cash flow. And sometimes you're gonna use a credit card. And the ones I use are two. I use my American Express business gold card, which I will link below. It is amazing. You get like so much money, like, spending money. Like last year I got like two flights for free round trip to Europe. 
because I use my American Express card. Um, I also use one card called the Carrot card. Carrot is a great card if you're a creator and you don't have like a huge history and you want a credit card. This is a great option. It uses your social following to get you approved instead of a FICO score, which I think is so genius. So if you're a young person and you can't get a credit card, check out Carrot. It's the bank for creators and my friend's the founder. I will link the links below. I've never talked about my credit card lineup, but those are the two I mainly use. I'm thinking to apply for a Chase Sapphire card. So let me know if you guys like that. I'm not a financial YouTuber. I'm more just a YouTuber that's very financially cautious because I grew up broke. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any feedback, just let me know. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys want to, you guys can check out my podcast. It's called I'm not an expert. It's typically where I have the extended version of whatever I talk about, um, on this YouTube video. So you guys can check it out it's on Spotify, Apple music and all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Oh, shout out to the comment winner. All right. Comment below. If you have any questions, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.